Let's talk about risk management. Risk is certainly part of rock climbing. We put ourselves in risky situations because it's exciting, but we need to know how to manage that risk. Risk generally is divided into two categories, subjective and objective risk. Subjective risk is stuff you, the subject, can do wrong. User error, mistakes you can make. Objective risk or objective hazards are things outside of your control, stuff that can happen to you. You're the object of that action. And the two main ones that you think about immediately are rock fall and weather. These are things that are just realities and you can't control them, but you can reduce your exposure to those risks. So let's apply this kind of thinking to each type of rock climbing. In a top rope environment, say out here in Joshua Tree with your friends just hanging a couple top ropes at the crag for the afternoon, you should be able to manage all of the objective hazards. When you go up top to build those anchors, you build really good anchors. You check the top for loose rock that could fall. You check for holds that could be pulled off and you check your gear. That's an objective hazard, old worn out gear that could fail. A helmet is a really great way to protect yourself and it's really not hurting you to wear the thing. If you've done all of that, that's a really safe environment. But people still get hurt doing that mostly because of subjective hazards, mistakes that people make. Inattentive belaying is a big one. Belaying is something where we're constantly doing it and our climber is not falling, right? So we can do little sloppy things, let go of the brakes, and nothing bad happens. That reinforces this idea that, oh, it's no big deal. And so complacency creeps in. People get in the habit of taking their hand off the brakes to scratch their nose or whatever. And then eventually you're gonna do it at the wrong moment. Something bad could happen. Other user error types of hazards that can happen in a top roping environment. One that I see all the time is inexperienced climbers have a tendency to lean one way or the other while being lowered. And if they lean to the right and lower way out to the right and then slip, they can take a big swing and run into stuff. So. You need to be supervising if you have inexperienced climbers. Um, even in a top roping environment, there's tons of mistakes you can make. You could fail to tie in properly or fail to buckle a harness. But not too much in the way of objective hazard in that setting. Similarly in bouldering, most of the hazards are subjective. Poor spotting, poor choices in terms of going for a move that you don't really have. There is an objective hazard anytime you're 20 feet off the ground without a rope. And even a three foot fall, if you land wrong or hit your head, could be serious. But like top roping, relatively safe activity, fairly high rates of injury, but those are typically minor injuries, sprained ankles, bruised heels, lower extremity issues from falling and hitting the ground. Um, inattentive spotting, much like inattentive belaying, is a thing where you get reinforced positively for that lazy practice because nine times out of 10, Nothing happens when you spot badly or inattentively, but then that 10th time when the boulder or falls unexpectedly, while well, you're in a bad spotting position, you could easily end up with a broken wrist or finger or your buddy who fell could end up hurt. So you need to really be vigilant about complacency creeping in to your spotting, just like in your belaying. But where climbing gets really risky in terms of serious accidents and fatalities is when people go into multi-pitch and specifically alpine terrain. There's a whole category in the annual accident reports called overestimating ability and a lot of the serious accidents are attributed to this factor among others. People will think, oh I can climb 511 at my local crag and so then they go to an unfamiliar place maybe somewhere more committing, big routes in the High Sierra perhaps, and jump on like a 10 pitch 511. Well, to reduce your exposure to the risks on these bigger climbs in say the Alpine or in a big wall or just any multi-pitch environment, one of the keys is to be able to move fast. Some of those objective hazards like rockfall or weather coming in are always there. And so the way that you reduce that risk is not by actually altering the weather um, or the fact that there's loose rock in the mountains, it's by moving fast, you reduce your exposure to that risk. And yeah, you can climb 511 at your local crag, but can you do a six mile approach to high elevation, climb a bunch of pitches, do the descent and get back out before dark? Being on a 13,000 foot summit after dark as it gets super cold is really dangerous. And then 
making those descents when you're in a hurry because it's getting dark or it's already dark and you're cold, making those descents in a hurry is really dangerous. A lot of accidents happen on the descent. So people getting into that style of climbing, coming from a comfortable, safe roadside local crag, don't necessarily think about the fact that speed is safety. And if you're not fast enough, then you end up descending in a hurry, tired, potentially after dark. And that's when a lot of accidents happen. So do your homework, get on routes that you're ready for. And speaking of the descent, don't rush. So the descent is a big source of accidents and two main things within that category of descending are the sources of a lot of accidents. One is moving unroped on terrain where you should have stopped and roped up. Maybe you got off route, it got steeper, you expected a third class descent and now you're clearly in fifth class terrain, but you're stubborn, you're in a hurry and you just keep going. Now you're, you're essentially free solo down climbing and then you slip. Um, a lot of accidents happen that way. Also a lot of rappelling accidents happen and many of those are totally user error, totally subjective hazard. You didn't put a stop or not in the end because you were in a hurry, you were tired, it was dark, and then you didn't see the rappel station you were supposed to stop at and just zipped off the end of your rope. Such, a, such an unnecessary accident, just slow down in that situation. Okay, it's dark, it's not gonna get any darker. You should have a headlamp um, headlamp and a jacket in your pack always in the Alpine. That comes back to having the proper equipment is a big part of being safe. Um, so descending is a big source of accidents. Overestimating ability is a big source of accidents. And then there's another one that I think is coming into the sport more and more, which is complacency or a casual attitude about falling. In the climbing movies, you see people taking these huge falls all the time and, and they're fine. So you get this idea like, yeah, part of climbing is going for it and taking these huge falls. But at the beginning and intermediate level, a lot of the climbs we're doing, most of the climbs we're doing are vertical or less than vertical, unless you're specifically going sport climbing and, and you're on overhanging terrain. When you fall in a vertical or less than vertical environment, you're building up a bunch of energy and then you're smacking into the wall or ledges or protrusions. I mean, falling is really something not to be taken lightly. You, you build up a bunch of potential energy and then you stop suddenly. So don't get the idea from those climbing movies that it's okay to take 50 foot screamers all the time. Those guys that are out there doing it for the camera in those movies are on extremely overhanging, super hard, you know, like 513 sport climbs where, yeah, it is relatively safe to take a huge fall because you're on an overhang and you're not gonna hit anything. But for most of us mortals that are climbing easier stuff, we're not on 30 degree overhangs and when we fall, we're very likely to break an ankle or something along those lines. So don't get complacent about belaying. Don't get complacent about spotting. Take falling seriously and, and generally avoid it unless you're on an overhang. Don't overestimate your own ability. Do your homework and choose routes that you can safely climb, you have the correct gear and knowledge to protect them adequately, you know how to get down, and you're competent and efficient enough to get up and back down without getting into dark and cold and starting to rush. And I think with all of those things in mind, you can control a lot of the hazards, and certainly not all, but you can control a lot of the hazards of rock climbing and be really safe out there.